Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the newest first anniversary limit break weapon, which is Yuffie. She also got a costume. I'm going to dive right in. I will say at the beginning of this video that I am not planning to pull for Yuffie yet. The reason is I know that Tifa and Aerith are both coming out, and I really want to most likely take both of those weapons to OB6 at a minimum if not possibly take Tifa's to OB-10, depending what it is. But I don't want anyone to take my waiting to pull as a sign that this is not a great weapon, because it is, I'm gonna cover that. Uh, but when in doubt, it never hurts to wait. You might be missing out on a little bit of ability to, like say, do well in this event or something. But ultimately, if you've saved your crystals and stuff, uh, if you have any doubt or you really wanna know what's the best ones to pull for, I would suggest waiting, and that's what I'm gonna do here. One more thing with that, just know, on average, right, it's not a guarantee, but on these Limit Break banners, because of you know how the rewards work and the guaranteed weapons on page two, by the end of two pages, on average, you should be able to get about OB6 or very close. And on average, that should take about 42,000 blue crystals. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to OB6 a weapon. Obviously, that's not guaranteed. I've had times where I've pulled, you know, upwards of 70 to 80,000 crystals and was not able to OB6 a weapon. But on average, right? If you don't have at least that much, I wouldn't be planning on it getting there. Okay. So, what does Yuffie have? Bahamut Mail is identical to Clouds. It gives the boost attack to all allies. And just to kind of go over that one more time, at level two here, which is what you get, it's plus 10 to physical and magical attack and plus 5% to physical and magical attack. Quite good, especially if you're running somebody else with a garb like this, Cloud right now, uh, That that's gonna be quite the addition. Bahamut's Bite, physical attack plus 5% and 10% more ability damage, physical ability damage uh, when your command stance is max. I'm not gonna spend too much time going over that uh, just because I went over it with Cloud and it's the same thing. Uh, I think the outfit's pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I don't know. Yuffie's not really my personal favorite character, but I think it, I think it looks pretty good. The Hummet Cutter is what we're really here for. What we really want to know, is this any good? And the simple answer is yes. In fact, if you take it to OB10, this ability right here is the strongest physical non-elemental damage weapon in the game. And the reason for that is because of this 1.3 times multiplier. So if you take 1080, you multiply it by 1.3, you get 1404%. Now to remember, Tifa's Guide Gloves and Cloud Zidane's Sword are the previous two highest physical non-elemental damage weapons in the game. Those both cap out at 1300% on the C ability. So this is about 104% more than those, which means it's just better at dealing damage. Additionally, it's got this second ability to it where it gives a mid potency magic increase, magic defense increase to the entire team. That is also really good. Uh, one, one thing I didn't I did forget to mention was that this 1.3 has to have a debuff on the target. So it is a little bit more conditional than Guide Gloves or Z Zidane Sword, but uh, most of the time that's not going to be too tough to get, especially at this point. This magic defense increase though, also insanely good. Um, it does not always stack to high. So at five star, it's just mid and it won't ever go past mid, but starting at OB6, it stacks to high. If you're a new player or if you're somebody who missed Kimura Wand for Aerith, or you don't like to run Aerith, whatever the case may be, I think this right here makes this weapon extremely powerful. The fact that you can have a main DPS who's also providing utility and they're not taking anything away from your ability to do DPS is insane. The R abilities are also obviously very good. They are in line with what we expect from Limit Break weapons. Boost physical attack to all allies, caps out at 46, boost ability potency, uh, physical ability potency at 39. Uh, that is perfectly great. Um, circle sigil boosts. I mean, it even has 693 physical attack at max, 
which I can tell you, for example, guide gloves, I think ca caps out around 670 something. So all around, this is just the single best um, physical non-elemental damage weapon right now that we've had in the game. Another thing, uh, you know, if you're a new player, you're going to get value if you don't have something like this already. I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of this at five star. Obviously, I think taking it to OB1 is always worth it. And for those of you who wanna know what that looks like, here's the card from Tom Rom. So you can see going from five star to OB1, you get an extra 110% physical non-elemental damage. When you have the multiplier, uh, that 650 becomes 845%, which is basically like what a lot of OB10 elemental weapons do. So 845 is not bad by any means, uh, especially when you're getting all this other stuff out of it, the magic defense increase for your whole party, the R abilities, etc. However, where I believe this weapon shines, if you don't have Zidane Sword or Guide Gloves to at least OB6, then I would really, if you're going for this, I would highly recommend trying to get it to OB6. And the reason is 950% damage, again, which is really starting to get up there. When you have the multiplier, you're looking at 1,235%. So it's only 65% less than uh, Guide Gloves or Zidane Sword at OB10, right? That's just value. The fact that it can stack to high, and if you're using this uh, as the damage weapon on Yuffie, if you're bringing her for this, you're gonna be using it a lot. So stacking it up to high, I think is pretty likely, and you're gonna be at basically a high potency magic defense buff for everybody for the majority of the battle. And because of that physical damage that you're doing, I think that that is why I think this is worth taking to OB6 if you really want to go for it. Now, if you're on a budget or or something like that, or you're really new and you just don't have a lot of crystals, I still would, would think one copy of this would help it a lot. Um, also, this being the like fourth boost physical attack to all allies weapon in the game, I don't know, you know, if you have the six month anniversary weapons and stuff, really starts to help uh, be able to kind of max this out uh, depending, you know, if you need that on a team or not. But it, there are some lineups, I think, that could really uh, pump that physical attack stat with something like this. The next thing I want to show, this is a new tool that Tom Rom has made. He's always coming up with these new inventive uh, charts and, and things that really help us make decisions. So I want to pull that over here right now. What we're looking at here is a list of every single one of Yuffie's weapons so far in the game. In purple here, you can see Bahamut Cutter is um, highlighted in purple. And so that just makes it a little bit easier to distinguish it. If you go all the way over to these, these two right-hand columns, the far right is our abilities. You can see she doesn't have at this time any weapon that gives anything higher than 46 to physical attack on the R ability. This is 46 as well, but it's to all allies, which is much stronger than just regular physical attack 46. Uh, it also has the physical ability potency. So you can see if you look through these, just a brief look tells me she doesn't have anything else that boosts physical ability potency. So this really helps kind of round out her kit because other than, than this weapon, most of her best stuff is going to be elemental based. And, you know, one of the things that I probably use the most, for example, on Cloud or Tifa is non-elemental damage because I can try to use it if I'm really weak in an element or whatever. So this here tells you if there's a buff debuff. She's got three breaches. She's got a physical attack up, a physical attack down, a fire buff magic defense all i think is just amazing it's the only one i believe that's aoe and here you can see the damage right ob10 1080 1404 percent i've previously been a big fan of hawkeye which is her earth damage weapon that goes up to 1020 percent with a multiplier in the right circumstances she's also got bamboo ring uh, which goes up to a thousand if that's also physical non-elemental damage but 1400% blows that out of the water. So 
even when you're comparing it to everything else that she has, it's pretty easy to see that this is going to be one of, if not maybe at this point, her best weapon that's ever been offered. So with that in mind, um, I guess my advice is this. Uh, if you are a Yuffie fan or if you're a new player and you just like your only goal is to have the best team you can so that you can clear as much content as possible, or if you're a veteran player who knows that it's important to be able to switch in, you know, different characters because you never know what they're going to bring, or you missed something like Kimura Wand, or you missed Zidane Sword and Guide Gloves, I, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want this. For me, it just comes down to the fact that one, Yuffie is not somebody that I that I build up, not somebody that I try to use. And because of that, you know, it's not like somebody that I'm going to try to just gun for. I would like to get one copy of this, but I would need to be able to plan to go to at least six stamps in order to get that. If I was going to go to six, I would feel pretty compelled to try to go for 12. You've seen my pull videos, you know how it gets, and it's hard uh, to stay disciplined during that. So for that reason, I'm waiting. I know that Tifa and Aerith are coming. I really want to probably take uh, Tifa's to, like I said, OB6 to 10, and Aerith's probably to OB6. That's the goal. I don't even know if I have enough for that. I'm willing to make a purchase, but I would prefer not to, honestly. Um, I'm, the goal is to do as little of that as possible. However, if it makes sense, I will. But that is ultimately what I think about this banner. I think it is... I don't think it's going to hurt anybody's account, and I think it can help a lot of people. But if you know you have limited resources and you're wanting to, you know, probably pull for Tifa or Aerith, or at least if you're just a new player and you want to see, I think it would behoove you to wait because in two more weeks we will have that information and this banner will be around till October 6th, which is well more than two weeks, so you have plenty of time. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you did polls, how they went. I always love to hear that. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.